Here are some broadcast design inspirations you can create with Midjourney if you know how to prompt them, even in the style of Wes Anderson. You can prompt various broadcast design elements such as globes, backgrounds, particles, and logos. Then you can combine them in After Effects to create style frames for your broadcast design project. The great thing about Midjourney is that it doesn't just provide you with unreproducible fantasy images. In fact, you can recreate them in your favorite 3D tool, making Midjourney the perfect source for broadcast design inspiration. In my early days as a motion design freelancer, I was heavily into broadcast design, especially news openers. Now that generative AI has emerged, I wanted to know whether you could speed up your design workflow using Midjourney. In the first half of this tutorial, I'm gonna show you a way to prompt engineer visual elements in Midjourney, which can help you find ideas for creating motion design or a news intro specifically. In the second half, we're gonna use After Effects to create a style frame with a generated image and experiment with different methods to add motion to it for an animation draft, which can be the foundation for your final animation. As some of you may have already experienced, creating images here in Midjourney isn't as straightforward as you might want it to be, because generative art isn't an exact science yet. I'll show you. My common sense would prompt 3D rendering of a news opener with a big globe in the center, broadcast design, blue and orange, the aspect ratio is 16 to 9. Well, reminds me of 1990s local TV news, rendered in 3D Studio, the MS-DOS version. But it's good to know that Midjourney's training data reaches far back into the past. But don't worry, with the right prompting, you can gradually narrow down what you're looking for. When we don't want it to look like it was rendered in Autodesk 3D Studio, then maybe add Rendered in Cinema 4D with the Octane Render. Not significantly better. So, try to break down the sentences into short keywords. You can also let Midjourney decide what colors it uses and type Beautiful Lights instead. Not bad at all. You can also experiment with the word order by shuffling the keywords. 3D render, broadcast design, news opener, beautiful lights, lens flares, created in Cinema 4D with the Octane Renderer, big globe in the center. Wow, not only does word order matter in Midjourney, the results also have improved in my opinion, especially the lighting. You can now pick the best of the four images, remix it, meaning that you can generate similar variations based on your selection, but with the ability to edit the prompt to change things slightly. For example, you can add your source of inspiration. In my case, it's the design studio that inspired me in my early days as a broadcast designer, namely Troika.tv. I don't know if they still exist, but in that time they created trend-setting motion design for broadcast TV. Maybe it's just my imagination, but I think that adding the studio's name made things more beautiful. It's worth mentioning that there is also a moral and ethical issue about using someone else's work as a reference instead of creating a unique design from scratch. But on the other hand, many designers, myself included, find inspiration from Pinterest, Behance, etc. in their daily work, especially on time pressure. I don't want to get deep into it because it's complicated. But come on. It's fun to play with different artists, especially when they don't directly relate to motion design, like Wes Anderson. Beautiful, but that's too much of a good thing. But what about Kolani, the German industrial designer, and Behance as our source of inspiration? Well, doesn't remind of Kolani at all, but for me, the result gives a push in the right direction. Paradoxically, it looks less futuristic compared to Kolani's organic design. If you like one of the results and try to create variations of it with different framings and camera angles by adding extreme close-up, view to the globe, top angle view, then you'll fail. Because I found out that these additional prompts were contradicted by the keyword broadcast design. But here's a workaround. Reduce the prompt to photograph of a detail of a globe, 3D style, extreme close-up, shallow depth, 
beautiful lighting. Now, that's a nice angle. But to get back to our initial broadcast design, you can remix your favorite and add back broadcast design, news opener, lens flares, cinema 4D, octane renderer. And if you feel you're not quite there yet, then you can remix the remix and add other elements you would like to see, like glowing glass surrounded by a bunch of glass rings. Wow, that looks like broadcast design. Strolling back to the initial wide shot image, you might want to match its look with the one of the styles of the close-up images. That's not easy in mid-journey alone. But hey, we are motion designers and After Effects guys. We can later change everything to our needs. And the best strategy would be to generate separate elements to have more flexibility in compositing. First, we need a background based on the previous Kalani design, but without the globe. So prompt, 3D render, broadcast design background by Kalani, empty center, behance, beautiful lights, lens flares, cinema 4D, octane render. In case there is no result that pleases you, you can continue generating variations until you find the right one, giving you a better selection to choose from. For the extra globe, you can prompt photograph of a globe, glowing glass, 3D style, extreme close-up, shallow depth, beautiful lighting, Broadcast Design, News Opener, Lens Flares, Cinema 4D, Octane Render. I don't know if you need them, but for some extra particles, you can complement the previous prompt with Surrounded by Glowing Particles, Dark Background. Looks good. But again, create variations of your favorites to have more flexibility later in compositing. What's still missing is a proper logo. But I can tell you right from the start that you won't get good results. Let me show you. Let's type 3D render of the word news, frontal perspective, empty dark background, title design by experienceperception.com, behance, beautiful lights, lens flares, cinema 4D, octane renderer. For those who don't know perception, it's the studio that created all the Marvel title openers. See, not only does it not look convincing, Midjourney doesn't even generate typography correctly. But there is a new platform called Ideogram that can handle text better and is more suitable for creating logos than Midjourney. But let's stay in Midjourney to keep everything consistent with the previous images. Midjourney is better in generating single letters than words, at least in this version I'm working with. If you're okay with it, then replace the word news with the letter N, but consisting of glass and maybe add electric glows. If one of the results is fine for you, you can also upscale it and let Midjourney create subtle variations of it to see if there'll be an even better result. You can also try what happens if we use gold instead of glass. Because they look good, let's also take them into consideration for our later compositing in After Effects. Same here, upscale and create subtle or even stronger variations. By the way, you can always scroll back to your previous results and generate further variations. The more you generate, the more you have something to composite with. And if you feel you have enough images, you can move over to After Effects. These are my favorites I picked from the groups of four generated images. And I chose this image to be our close-up version of the style frame we're gonna create now. Midjourney didn't generate the continents of the globe correctly, but this is sufficient to convey the look and feel of the style frame we are after. So let's focus on the wide shot image and start with the background. The good thing is that Midjourney more or less preserved the camera perspective of this variation of the background. Without further ado, you can simply set the blending mode to screen and adjust the position slightly. You can take the same image and adjust rotation, position and scale to create a nice ceiling. For the compositing process, you may want to use your own glows later instead of these glows given by Midjourney. But no problem, you can go to Photoshop and remove them via Generative Fill. In After Effects, you replace the original background with a new one. Then we'll take the globe, mask it and rescale and reposition it. To have it transparent like glass, you set the blending mode to screen. But to keep the continents opaque, 
you can key out the blue ocean from the duplicated globe layer. Because Midjourney generated the continent of America two times, you can apply a mask to it. Now, let's take the particles and see how they fit in. Looks good, but I don't think they make sense in a news opener. But what I really like are the reflections on the glass. So, let's go back to Midjourney, copy paste the initial prompt, delete surrounded by particles, and change beautiful lighting to beautiful reflections. And we don't need this chunk of keywords anymore. And after generating some variants, I would pick this one. Inserting it into our composition makes the globe appear as high reflective glass. Now, let's take on the logo. And instead of deciding whether the golden logo or the glass logo would be the better choice, I would rather combine both of them with each other. Although they have similar shapes, it would be still cumbersome to properly composite them. So again, you can go back to Midjourney and apply the very useful blend command. Simply drag the golden and the glass logo into the recording boxes and let Midjourney do the job. I like the results, but unfortunately it didn't keep the beautiful shape we had before. But that's okay for me. Still, let's try other variations. This comes very close to our initial end shape. Let's try another subtle variation, but with an orange glow inside. Let's also export this one into After Effects. Mask the outer shape of the golden version and the inner shape of the orange one to have them combined. And now you can add some extras into your composition, like creating an extra neon glow with Video Copilot Saber plugin. Then duplicate the logo layers, set the Y scale to negative to create a reflection on the floor. Now we can put the glows that we previously removed using generative fill, but now with greater control over how they look. Finally, you can apply some color grading to it to match it with a close-up image. And I believe the look and feel is now consistent, especially when we compare both style frames with each other, excluding the N logo. The style frame on the right could be the start of the news intro, and the left one the end screen. But if you're working on a client project, this probably wouldn't be sufficient to present it to them. We need at least one more image for in between that suggests how the animation evolved from style frame A to style frame B. An image that has a different camera angle. We could try to extract a depth map out of it and Midas for example to use it as a displacement map. It works quite good for the environment to a certain degree. But if you try to crank up the values, the globe just falls apart. A better way is to export separate images for the logo, the globe and the background to export them later into a 3D program. And don't forget to prepare the mask paths. They are intended to be used for 3D extrusion. A common way to export the paths is to copy-paste them into Illustrator and export them from here into your favorite 3D tool, in my case Cinema 4D. What we're gonna do now is reconstruct the image using simple 3D primitives, because we're gonna camera project the images onto them. So make sure that your 3D program is able to accomplish camera mapping. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, meaning you don't have to remodel every detail. We just need another camera angle. After texturing the 3D primitives using the camera mapping technique, you can now change the camera angle while keeping the images fixed to the models. By the way, it doesn't matter if the textures abruptly cut off in certain camera angles. You can extend the image using generative fill in Photoshop or simply find a better camera angle. But now that you have already camera mapped the scene, why not take advantage of the 3D tool by making the floor reflective, adding further 3D elements and depth of field for more depth. Feel free to export your new image back into After Effects and apply further compositing to it. But if you have already the beta version of After Effects installed, you can not only import 3D objects and edit the 3D camera interactively, but also apply effects simultaneously. This way, you don't always have to switch back and forth between your 3D application and After Effects. But what about creating a rough animation from these style frames? 
If you let AI do the job, like Runway's Gen 2 algorithm, you can get some helpful inspirations, but sometimes you may also get weird results. And while you're at it using After Effects Beta, why not create the animation draft directly here instead of in your 3D program? As mentioned earlier, you can view the result with all the compositing work applied. This rough preview will give your client a better idea of your intended animation. But if you're an advanced motion designer, I wouldn't necessarily present the style frames we created previously. However, they can serve as a useful guideline for your personal design process. Consider recreating them from scratch, not necessarily pixel perfect, but aiming to capture the general look and feel. This approach gives you complete control over your design, ensuring that the style frames maintain consistency. What's even better is that while Midjourney can be a source of inspiration, you're not limited to what it provides. Ultimately, you can infuse your own personal touch into your designs. And that's it, guys. What I've shown you was just the simplified prompt engineering process. In fact, it took me a lot of trial and error to find the proper prompts to achieve what I wanted. But it's worth investing time in it, because once I discovered my prompt formula for a news intro, I could quickly generate inspiration for an award opener, a weather forecast graphics, or a sports intro. So yes, Generative design tools like Midjourney can speed up your design process and I encourage you to try them out. Coupled with tools like After Effects or Cinema 4D, they can be unbeatable. See you next time.